So let's begin. We are proud to host tonight's discussion of Vines and Vision, the winemakers of Santa Barbara County, not only for the superlative images and words of this wonderful book, but because it was created by two local treasures and great friends of Chaucer's, renowned photographer Macduff Everton and dedicated journalist Matt Ketman. To introduce our speakers and to moderate this evening, I am pleased to introduce Greg Brewer, originally a French instructor at UCSB Greg founded his advocation 29 years ago while working at the Santa Barbara Winery. In 1996, he created his eponymous label, Brewer Clifton, with original partner Steve Clifton. While his efforts in the winemaking industry are too numerous to list, the entirety of his career has been rooted in the Santa Rita Hills Appalachian, which he helped to map, define, and establish in 1997. Recently, his work within that realm received widespread accolades when he was named by Wine Spectator Magazine as its 2020 Winemaker of the Year. Congratulations to you, Greg, and thank you for leading tonight's discussion. Thank you so much for having me. Um, a huge, just sincere voice of gratitude to Chaucer's, um, everyone in attendance tonight. Um, thank you so much for devoting this time um, in your evening to an amazing, huge piece of work um, that we're gonna to celebrate tonight um, with two dear friends, amazing colleagues. Um, and we're gonna get kind of right into it. I'm gonna keep the, the bios a little bit brief for them. Um, they're readily available, they're in the book, they were in the, um, the presentation for tonight. So I, I'm really ravenous and desirous to get into the, the heart of this matter, to learn about the genesis of the book and kind of the evolution of things along the way. Um, so I'm gonna keep things kind of brief, um, but starting off with Matt Ketman, um, a beautiful friend, um, journalist of decades, um, predominantly for the Santa Barbara Independent, as we all know, um, and of course now the Wine Enthusiast magazine, um, which in my career span has only gained in recognition and importance and, and just, just everything, nourishment of a publication. It's largely due to Matt's work, his diligent work, um, focusing predominantly on the Central Coast, um, for which we're all very, very, very appreciative um, to really put our area in the limelight of the world. Um, and then of course, Macduff Everton, um, his career goes back decades and decades in photojournalism, multiple continents, um, contributing for more publications. And I mean, I've tried to remember and I've got them in my notes, but <laughs> it's too much for me to keep track of. Um, huge, huge, huge career. Um, and bringing a sensitivity to photojournalism, um, to the subjects that he captures, the landscape that he portrays. Um, and really we're, we're in such beautiful hands tonight. And I can't wait to kind of learn more about what, what prompted this work um, and really to get into it. So thank you both um, for joining me. Um, and first and foremost, I have to say that here I am, I'm actually using a palette of your books as a podium for, <laughs> for this. Luckily it still has the tarp on it. So if it gets really crazy and I spill, like it's gonna be okay, I won't ruin them. Um, and I do admit this glorious tome here, I'm about a third of the way through. When I first grabbed it, um, it's big, it's really big. And, and for, for you know, this gentleman here who didn't quite make it all the way through grad school <laughs> in French Lit, I was a little bit intimidated. And I have to say, like, it's such a pleasure to read this. It's so engaging that it's like, for me, it's like these little short stories and really inside snapshots of, of all these colleagues and the photos and the way you've broken it up and other articles to kind of break up all the producers. Really, I mean, it, it, it just, it's really, it's, it's so much more than just, oh, here's this beautiful book. It, it, it offers so much. And so thank you for the, the time and commitment that that obviously took to make this happen. It's awesome. And it's heavy, so I'm gonna put it back on the palette. <laughs> um, now, I'm gonna kind of jump, jump through um, a little bit. You know, we all went to UCSB, which is awesome. McDuff, a fifth generation Oregonian. Matt, the same in California. I'm more recent to the West Coast, but doing the best I can. Um, and I love that your, your relationship, your professional relationship anyway, was sparked um, through the book that, on which you collaborated for The Lark. Um, and then in the fall of 2017, you convened, I think James Joyce of Memory Serves, um, and it was kind of the, 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 the seed or the genesis of this. I'd love to know, like how that came about. Was it 
did you see a need in the local community to kind of capture and punctuate things? Was it a, a personal burning desire to create something like this? Talk to me. Uh, I mean, I'll jump in and then let McDuff tell his side of the story. But, you know, we worked together on that Lark book. I did the wine chapter uh, and I helped McDuff with some other editing aspects of it. And I think he um, respected my work and my, my attention to detail when it came to that project. And so he said, let's go meet for a beer at the James Joyce. And so we had some Guinness, which actually we had yesterday while we were packing boxes all morning <laughs> and afternoon. Um, and uh, so we had a Guinness and uh, he said, we should do a wine book together. And I said, yes, we should. I mean, I had been covering wine here really for almost 20 years, more intently the last you know, decade or a dozen years or so. Um, and you know, you know, being in charge of the Central Coast for Wine Enthusiasts is a pretty big job. I'm reviewing a couple hundred wines a month. And so it was kind of like, the, and for me as a journalist, I've written chapters in other books, but I've never really written my own book. So it was a step I kind of wanted to make career-wise anyway. And so suddenly I had, you know, this renowned photographer who I didn't really, we, you know, we had never, that was the first time we actually had met in person was over that beer. We had communicated via email and, and phone perhaps, but that was about it. Um, and so now there's this renowned journalist who also has archival photos. So he's bringing additional value to the project. Uh, and I said, yeah, let's do it. I also thought, like an idiot, that it was going to be really easy <laughs> that I had actually <laughs> written ha most of the chapters already because I had written a lot about all these wineries that are, that are in the book. But, you know, once I went to go back over those old articles, they were, they were newspaper articles that some pieces made sense for, for book chapters, but it really had to be kind of re-reported and, and all of that. And so um, really the first step was kind of introducing McDuff uh, back into the wine scene. He had, he had covered various people over the years, but he wasn't a big uh, wine expert or anything like he is now. Um, and so, uh, you know, I got to know McDuff a little bit and then I quickly realized that like he was going to be more interesting than most of the people he was going to go talk to anyway. So they were going to be fascinated with him. So he wasn't one of these, you know, partners that you have to go kind of continuously manage and, and reintroduce to people all the time. It was like, I'll just set him on his way. I just gave him phone numbers and he was off. And, um, you know, so by that, that next summer, um, he was shooting away. And then it, it took me a few more months to really kind of start revving up my engines. And McDuff was also um, the pressure that I needed to, to, to have to, to finish something like this. Um, I knew once we started that we were going to produce something. Uh, I mean, I don't do things really like halfway. I like to do things completely and, and well, if I'm going to put my name on it and dive into it. So um, that's... That's my side of how we started. I don't know if McDuff has a different yeah, McDuff, perspective. I'd love, hear, I'd love to hear yours. Like what, what, what was it that like sparked your interest to do this? It seemed like a no brainer. Um, I mean, Matt is so well respected in the, in the Central Coast. Um, and between us, we had, what is it? 40 years, 50 years of, of working in this area. And I didn't know anyone else who would um, bring so much to a collaboration like this. And when I started doing this, uh, uh, because Matt hadn't um, worked with me before, when I would photograph a place, if, if he had a story, if we had a chapter, I would start laying it out so he could see. Um, and that became the, the whole template of how this book Came, uh, became was that um, each time he would write a chapter, I would lay it out and it just sort of built incrementally. And I'd have to wait to see what he would write because he might mention someone who I hadn't met before. Um, because it was like, because of my work as a photojournalist, I wanted these to be real shots of, of people working. I, and I didn't want to go and set something up. I wanted people in the harvest to be harvesting if, if they were in the winery. Um, and sometimes that was difficult to convey that I actually could work without getting in people's way. Um, Which because, you did beautifully, by the way, just from a, from a subject point of view. You, you were calm, you were patient, and you took all the time in the world. You were so pro with everything, and you kind of just blended in, which a lot of people don't. So that's obviously a testament to 
how you operate. I, I love this notion of like call and response between the two of you. So when, when you said, you know, he would write the article and then, and then your photos were kind of set things up, would, would it kind of teeter totter back and forth or, or was one kind of setting the tone for the direction of things, if that makes sense? Uh, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, there's a couple ways. It wasn't always just that I wrote the chapter and well, I'd have to write the chapter before he laid it out, but he was also shooting places before I was writing about them. And, and maybe I knew these people, uh, but he was coming back with stories occasionally that I would then kind of, when I was re-interviewing people, kind of weave those into things too. So he was bringing some information to the table once he was out there talking to these people as, as well as additional subjects. I mean, I, I knew most of these people and I knew, I think we have a pretty, it's not an exhaustive book, not everybody's in there, but it's, there's a, quite a few people in there. And I, and I think we're pretty proud of the, the ones that we selected and, and the ones that kind of made it in. Um, but there were a few that he ran into that I was like, oh yeah, you're right. We should, we should include those, which happened a lot because that's why there's like a hundred chapters. Um, but you know, I also, uh, so there was a lot of kind of feedback back and forth between each other on, on moving this project forward, really. Yeah, and that was that was it kind of brings me to the next question is the 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 scope of this. I mean, it's it's a it's a massive undertaking. I can't even fathom what goes into making that happen. Um, did 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 it did it swell up and and be kind of become more grand over the course of time through the photos and and writing, or or did you kind of have a plan that this would be more or less it? It's, I mean, we yeah. Go ahead, Mika. It started out we planned to do maybe. 20 or 30 winemakers, and <laughs> 200 pages long. And then it was like, oh, wait, we can't leave this person out. Oh, wait, we can't leave this person out. And, you know, at a certain point, Mary said, has Matt added anybody else? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we just decided, this is going to be the best book that's ever been done on this area. And why are we putting parameters on on what we're doing it, it should be it should evolve and if Perfect, and yeah. i let matt decide who we included and then i would go out and and photograph them and it it just kept evolving and getting larger and larger and larger and i would call the printer and and say <laughs> can we do 500 pages can we do 600 pages can we you know and even <laughs> even though it's it, pounds and is 632 pages it could have easily have been 800 pages because there's so many stories that i'd say matt did you know and he said you know i'd hear a story and matt said yeah i know but how are we going to put that in you know that chapter is going to be 2,000 words long instead of you know we have to you know um so it, it we ended up putting parameters but kept um they kept changing yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. That's awesome. And I, I would I would suspect, you know, from a producer's point of view, you know, when you receive an overture from people such as you for a work like this, it's it's immensely flattering. And and I would suspect everyone would have embraced with open arms. Did you ever did you encounter anything that surprised you? Either like crazy openness or or hesitancy at all? Or was everyone you're you're both so trusted and beloved in this area? I would assume it was all cool. I'm just curious if if you met any weirdness. I, I don't think anybody envisioned that uh, almost everybody that looks at the book has said, well, I thought you'd do a good job, but I never imagined it would be this good, which is a very backhanded compliment. But um, I get it all the time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think that um, there wasn't any, I mean, most people were open to us coming um you know winemakers are an interesting bunch of people and um their schedules are crazy and our schedules are crazy so there were a few that took time to to schedule and to, to get on the books and um and i also think you know some are some are more media savvy some are less media savvy most people appreciated immediately that we were going to show some extra attention to them mm -hmm. um and then and then when i would talk to him on the phone um you know we would go we would talk for a long time and and i when we originally started to get back a little bit to your other question of like did this ex like blow up on you you know i i thought oh we could do like you know 200 word chapters and but then once i start writing a chapter frankly it's a lot harder to write a short chapter than it is to write the full chapter because you feel like you're leaving so much on the cutting room floor so i just started going for it and it was 
Um, you know, there are a few chapters that are quite long, but most of them are in the, you know, 800 to 1200 word range, which, which feels about right. You know, it's about the right amount of length to tell a personal story, to, to talk about where they stand in the wine world today uh, and that sort of thing. So, um, I mean, we were already talking about people or wineries that we would add if we did a second edition and, and things like that. But I think for right now, we're, we're pretty happy with, with how it all turned out. Of course. Yeah. I mean, as you should be. And, and with all speaking of writing and, and as you're referencing kind of word count, you know, it, it makes me reflect on, you know, being a journalist and kind of knowing in your head what your parameters are. It's almost like how big of a bottle you're going to fill. I mean, you know, it's, it seems very set. So with all the writing you've done and McDuff, with all the photography you've done, um, what, what, if any, elements of the Santa Barbara County wine area render it more unique or like what's what are some of the things that really stand out to you that if, if someone were to ask you god what's that all about like how is that different from another area how would you respond uh i mean i'll go first since i know the wine well and compared to other regions um and then mcduff can go but um obviously we have well not obviously maybe not to many of the viewers but we have this extremely unique geography here which is if you've ever been to a tasting room in santa barbara you've heard the story so if you, you've probably heard it a 500 times, but basically we have the transverse range. So the whole coast opens on, you know, the mountains open onto the ocean. That doesn't happen anywhere else in the West Coast of the Americas. So you have this, this ocean influence that comes directly in from the West, flies over Lompoc, flies over Santa Maria and pushes into the valleys. So on the Western edge of the valleys, you can grow um, what are considered cooler climate grapes like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and to some extent Syrah. Um, but then as you go deeper into the valley, uh, you can grow warmer weather grapes like Cabernet and, and other, other grapes like that from the Bordeaux region and other even parts of Spain and Italy. Um, and so uh, you really can do, I mean, it sounds like a gimmick, but it's not. You really can do a variety of grapes here well. So there's that. And then there's what I get into in the intro, which to me, it, it is what sets Santa Barbara apart from many other regions that I cover is that the vintners here remain very inquisitive and remain very kind of taken by the magic of and the mystery of the whole thing, right? So, um, you know, my intro kind of goes into this visit we did to Du Rita Vineyard, which is on the far west, it's actually west of the Santa Rita Hills. So presumably cooler climate than, you know, than it almost gets anywhere in this region. Um, and, and, but then the grapes actually get ripe sooner sometimes than the ones that are for, to the east. So that's in the, kind of an anomaly. And all of the vintners that day were like, yeah, you know, we don't, they have theories, but they're like, we don't really know. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the fun part, right? I and mean, that's the fun part about wine. It's like, we don't know this, it's this, it's this blend of, you know, kind of controlled nature and then human influence in the cellar, whether, whether you're doing very low manipulation or, or very high manipulation, the, the, a human is involved and you can't deny that. The, the grapes don't just become wine without a human. And so there's this combination of nature, human, there's history, there's geography, there's all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that Santa Barbara vintners, for whatever reason, appreciate that uh, a lot more so maybe than other uh, regions that I've, that I've covered, you know, where, where people are more like cocksure and confident about why something does well. Yeah. Here, it's more like, we, we think it's this, but we don't know, and that's cool. Yeah, cool. And McDuff, from your standpoint, what like kind of, the physicality, you know, the, the physical nature of things, like what, what are some of the attributes here that really resonate with you and that, that stand out amongst all the other things that you've captured in, the, in your life? Well, first of all, one of the things that, and this isn't unique just to Santa Barbara County, but all the winemakers are, I consider them artists. And there's a passion in, in art and, uh, I find this also with with cooks, um, with good chefs, that they're so happy. I mean, they are in a in a job that they that they love, and they want to share that, and it becomes really interesting um, from my perspective, because the more I show interest in them, the more they want to show, and it leads into things that um, I I wouldn't plan. I mean, when I when I would go to different wineries, I never planned on what I was going to shoot other than if it was harvest. Um, I knew a, a broad idea of what I would be photographing, but um, 
The other thing that was incredibly, we were incredibly lucky on is that we had real good weather and rain uh, at the end of 2017, 2018. So a lot of the photographs, there's, there's clouds in the sky. And one of the cameras I use is a panoramic uh, Noblex camera, which covers what your eye sees with peripheral vision, which is about 140, 150 degrees. And because I have to hold it um, parallel, uh, I can't turn it up or down. I have to hold it level. Half the, half the picture is the sky. And if it's this boring, boring blue, it's not a very interesting picture. Um, but if there's something going on, if there's clouds coming in, it, it, it makes it much more dramatic. It's, it's like people say, you know, usually their, their license, um, their driver's license photographs are very boring. It's just this flat light and, and and you can do the same thing with a landscape. It can be very boring or it can add a depth of character. And I think that the clouds add that character to the landscape. And Santa Barbara County is a beautiful place. I mean, I, um, if, one, if, if one was a European and wanted to come to the United States, I would, uh, hardly recommend Santa Barbara County because you, there's just so many different areas here that are so beautiful. For sure. And the other thing that I found really interesting photographing is, you know, I would go into the vineyard and I would be taking notes and I'd say, what varietal of, of grape is this? And discovered that there were over 60 varietals, 60 different grapes that are commercially grown in Santa Barbara County, and, and you think you think of Napa or, or the Willamette Valley or something, you're thinking about one or two varietals, um, three. Here, there's 60, and it's just amazing. And, and to go um, from the coast inland, you're, you're changing temperature. Um, and, and, uh, Richard Sanford famously yeah. said, you know, the temperature rises a degree every mile you travel. Right. Now, you mentioned, you know, the, the beauty of the clouds, and I totally agree. Um, you know, but we don't have those boring blue skies. Like, don't tell the Chamber of Commerce that. I'm gonna, <laughs> darn those blue skies. Um, but I'm, I'm with you a zillion percent. I mean, when the clouds are around, it feels like a completely different world up here. Um, and, and so that would be something a little bit unique to the time frame. Um, during which you elected to create this work. Um, along those same lines, it made me think, were there, were there moments, for, and this is for both of you, were there like parts of interviews or moments, like just a, like one or two during the course of this that really struck you? You know what I mean? Like when you're like maybe taking a photo and you're like, oh my gosh, like you have that feeling or mad if you're interviewing someone and they share something really intimate or cool. Did that happen during the book? Um, I mean, for me, it happens uh, quite a bit in covering wine you know, beyond this region. And that's one reason I got interested in wine. It wasn't just because I like drinking wine. It was because wine is this connection to the past. It's a connection to, you know, other parts of the world. It's, it's a language that kind of everyone can speak. And also in a selfish way, covering the Central Coast for, especially for Wine Enthusiast Magazine, allows me to go down any dead end road I'd like to, to see some vineyard at the end. And I love going down dead end roads that have vineyards at the end. So there were numerous times when we were at a site meeting someone um, and you're just like, you're just like, wow, this is, this is a stunning part of California that not a lot of people get to see. Um, and we're, we're right here on the front lines of it. Um, but I'll say like, I get to do that all the time as part of my job. So it wasn't just related to this book. Um, but it is a motivation for why I cover this at all. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like inspiration, I mean, there's always, you know, hearing people's stories is always uh, really inspirational to me. I mean, even Greg, hearing your story about, you know, you were raised more or less by your mom in LA who was putting herself through law school. Um, and then you fell in love with France for no apparent reason other than like a high school teacher or something that really inspired you. But and then you then you come to Paris and you remember flying in. It was like this almost epiphany day. You know, I mean, those those stories are really interesting to me. And um, 
and I hope we convey them in a way that that um, you know really respects the the truth of them and the, and the spirit of them. And we ran into that a lot. I mean, uh, Michael Seguin from from Kaena, you know, Hawaii Mike, like he has these crazy stories about his grandmother and like kind of the spirit flowing through everything and how he made all these decisions and how he really believes like certain things happen for certain reasons. You hear that a number of times and you have to start to believe that there's some truth to that, that magic there. So um, that kind of stuff is what, is what is why I'm in this business at all. I mean, it happened quite a bit during the creation of the book, I'd say. Awesome. And I think that's why, and I want to go to you, McDuff, in just a sec, but I think that's why I, I meant that with the, the utmost sincerity, you know, cause I know a lot of these players as well, obviously, but reading through there was, and it's a testament to both of you and, and how sensitive you are to people, how much we all trust and love you. Um, but there's, it's, it's almost like diary entry. I mean, it's really a personal thing. I mean, you're reading these like stories about people. I mean, it really does read like, for me anyway, like a short story kind of thing. You're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that about so-and-so, or I didn't know they came into it that way. It's really just, you know, unfolding that way is so beautiful. It's not just like, oh, they make this and they do that and they use barrels or whatever. You know, it's all the personal thing is really engaging. And I think- There's not a lot of, I mean, for being a wine book, there's not a lot about wine. <laughs> No, and that's why I think it, it'll be such a beautiful thing for so many different people to enjoy. You know what I mean? Because sometimes specific wine books, they are what they are. But I think, you know, for the, you know, everyone in attendance tonight, listening in, for those that, you know, flipping through, gift giving, whatever, it, it's so much more than a wine book. Um, besides the beauty and everything else, I, I really think that it, it's just, it's, it's so expansive that way because of its intimacy. I think it's beautiful. So Macduff, I don't want to snow over you. So um, the... The, the photo thing, were there like moments? I mean, this area can be so epic, sunrise, sunset. Were there like a few times when you're like, wow, this is epic? Absolutely. I mean, um, there was one time I had a uh, lunch at, uh, with Jim Clendenin. I was laughing <laughs> for the- And do you remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and he brought out a bunch of library wines uh, from Burgundy, from Santa Barbara County, just, they just this awesome. insane selection. Um, and of course, we all had a sip. Uh, and I drive out and the sky is absolutely glorious. And there's a storm that's passing through and it's right, it's on the Bien Nacido um, vineyard area. And so I ran over and said, can I get the, the clicker to, to get through, to get up to uh, block Z to, to shoot? And I was hoping Chris was there or whatever, but the, the woman, she said, you know where you're going? And I said, yes, <laughs> and I'm in a hurry. And she gave me the clicker and I ran up there and I had like three or four minutes to shoot. And that's the cover and the back cover. And, wow. the, and the images that are in there. And it didn't last. It, it was one of the storms that just completely blew through. And you, know, you, you have to be in a place. Uh, and if you don't have your camera, if you're not there, you, you, you don't record it. But on another note, like um, Michael, who we're talking about, you know, um, he's from Hawaii. And he was talking about Hawaii. And, and I said, you know, my brother-in-law is Cecilio, Cecilio and Capono. And he said, no way, bro. You know, it was like, so immediately, <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, and those sort of things happen all the time. I mean, when I was in the vineyards um, at night when people were, were picking, you know, you'd have all these crews speaking Spanish, and and if they had a transistor radio, they would be playing. If they didn't, somebody would start singing, and someone would look to me and and sort of like, you know, do you understand what's going on? And I said, <laughs> do you have any Julio Jaramillo? And it would blow them away. It's like, you know who Julio Jaramillo is? And, you know, it's like, you know, and then I would, you know, I, I would sing with them sometimes, as, you know, um, so it was, for me, a lot of this um, was about the human connection mm -hmm. because I, I, uh, the work that I was doing down in Yucatan was uh, visual anthropological work. 
-hmm. And so sometimes people will say, well, you're working on a wine book. Isn't that kind of frou-frou or something? And it's like, no, you know, this book is, and that's one of the delights of working with Matt is that we're dealing with social issues. We're dealing with global warming and sustainability. You know, we're, we're um, Santa Barbara County perhaps has more women winemakers than any other wine area. So there's all these things that are global issues and it's right here in our backyard. And it's like, this is important. Sure. And, and working with Matt, it's like, are we gonna mention this? And he said, hell yes, let's do it. Yeah, cool. And that, that I, wanna, I wanna touch on that because that's really, I love how those are kind of inserted within the book, like those, you know, in, in, and someone in the, in the Q and A, you know, asked about how, you know, sequentially how the book was, was laid out. Um, and I think, and so, you know, the alphabetical thing, makes, it makes great sense. And it, it's also cool that it, for me anyway, that it wasn't just chronological, because it, it just, it keeps it more diverse, I think, um, being alphabetical, it's a little more of like a grab bag in some ways. Um, but then, you know, when you in, did insert the, the women winemaker section or, you know, the different kind of, not interludes, but you know what I mean, those like little intermissions, um, how was that determined? Was it just ideas that you felt were really important and timely and then the like where and, and kind of the sequence of those what was the the, the rationale behind that i mean to some extent it, it might be hard to go back and figure out how we did it now it just seems like how else would you do it <laughs> it's, uh i mean you know obviously we start with the introduction that's fairly odd. And, and richard sanford wrote a lovely forward for us and we have the introduction then we kind of tell the history, right? Because that seems important. Then geography needs needs to be there. Then we kind of dive into, um, you know, the, the 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 profiles. But then we were like simultaneously reporting these these. We call them like trend chapters, right? So um, it just felt like the book, based on other wine books I've I've read recently. Um, I mean, Raj Parr's Atlas recently was it was a good example, I think, where it kind of had a, a slightly similar thing where there were kind of producer profiles interspersed with these kind of slightly other ideas. And so um, it, I just felt like it needed something like that in there. And that was an easy way to do it. So we had, we ended up having about like five trends because we have the women winemakers, we have sustainability, we have home winemakers. That was something we really wanted to tell too, a fairly large chapter on home winemakers because it's a long time tradition here, going back to the fifth, I mean, really going back to before the commercial industry here. Sure. Um, and so we wanted to get that in there. Uh, and then we finished, we have this whole other chapter called El Buena Equipo, which is, um, you know, the good team. This was, this was McDuff's idea. As he was uh, alluding to, he was really connecting with all of um, the, the farm crews and uh, he's has, you know, he speaks not only fluent Spanish, but very, he knows all the slang in Spanish and everything like that. So he could really connect with them on a very direct level. And then he started taking a, a black uh, backdrop out, taking their pictures. Um, and then he'd bring them back their printed out pictures so that he became like a celebrity. He'd show up and they'd be like, oh, the photographer's here, the photographer's here. And so there's this whole chapter in the book, which looks like kind of a yearbook. And it's at the end because we didn't really know where else to put it. It was too big of its own chapter to be somewhere else. Um, but it's, it's pictures of, all of the people and types of people that are required to take a vintage um, to market. So that includes everyone from, you know, the farmers who are, who are pruning the, you know, pruning things. Um, and then you have, you know, all the way up to like wealthy proprietors and marketing people and, and then vineyard managers and all this sort of yeah. stuff. Um, and that was actually the essay there McDuff wrote because he wrote about, um, you know, the story of connecting with, with them and, and, and learning their stories and, um, so that's kind of, I mean, and then, yeah, and looking back, it's like, how did we organize it? Well, I'm not sure which other way you could have done it. You know, you could have stacked all those trend chapters together, but there's no value there. So Yeah, and it would have, I don't know, I, I think it keeps, it keeps the book so much more lively, I think, because it, you do, it's like, you know, chapters in a book or, you know, scenes in a movie or a musical score or something. It keeps you so much more engaged because you kind of, you know, you don't, you, you kind of don't know what's going to come next, you know, and, and that's, there's something really beautiful about that. Um, and speaking of personal connections between the two of you, um, is there something that you kind of learned about the other, or, you know, maybe I'm sure you've learned something, you know, about the other, what, what like throughout this process that, that surprised you or kind of a, 
a deeper understanding of the other? Anything stand out between the two of you? Uh, you go first, McDuff. <laughs> um, Matt is incredibly easy to work with. Um, and he's, uh, and one of the things I learned was that his, in, in, grad, in undergraduate school, you were an anthro major, right? Yeah. And one of his first stories was to go down and work with Annabelle Ford in Belize, who is someone who I worked with for years on my Maya book. And so there was, I, I think there's an empathy that you get working in anthropology and archeology span that you, first of all, you realize that there are other cultures and the, the belly button of the world isn't necessarily in your city or. Right. And so Matt had traveled and had that experience of the other. And it made it much easier to talk about these, a uh, lot of things. And although we're talking about winemaking in Santa Barbara County, I think we, our take on this was uh, a very much a worldview of, of looking at this, um, both from a sociological and, and, a, um, and an ethnographic point of view that, that this was an important area to document. And in that sense, this book is, uh, it, it's, a, it's just a moment in time of Santa Barbara County. It's like a time capsule. Yeah, that's, and, it's, it's so beautiful you said that um, because it's actually, I was kind of going there anyway in my thought. Um, and the, the question is, is kind of born out of that. So, you know, in, it, it, a lot of European kind of wine cultures, it I would suspect it's a little more static as far as you know this domain and you know the son or daughter will take over that domain and that's they don't really have a choice and <laughs> that's what happens. And just because we're in the U.S., you know the things I I know kind of and, and certainly see and I think even during the course of the book there might have been a little shifting around um, with different wineries staffing personnel, whatever. Um, was that frustrating or, or were you content with kind of capturing, and not like it's a snapshot, you know what I mean? But, but capturing like this, this period in time, was that, did you, how did you grapple with that, if you will? It, it was something that we had to realize early on and openly acknowledge, um, both internally for ourselves and as a talking point when explaining to people, because because this would come up during the process, like, oh, this is going to change. And we had to be <laughs> comfortable with it being a time capsule at some point, right? You know, I will say, you know, we were editing this stuff pretty much up until September of this year. So it's pretty up to date. Um, but yeah, in the course of it, not only were there personnel changes, people died, you yeah. know, that we had that we had covered. Um, and so that was heavy. Um, and, you know, but I think we tried to do, you know, we tried to be as up to date as possible. But I, and I, I don't know if it was, I think it was McDuff the period. He's like, you know, we have to think of this as like a time capsule. It's not a, it's a snapshot. It's not, you can't tell a fluid story in a printed form perfectly because it's going to change. Um, but I, you know, I think we got it at a, I mean, what I've said in a lot of the like marketing materials and other interviews is, you know, we're trying to capture what I think is one of the most exciting wine regions in the world. And I think that's not just my opinion and my bias, but like, I think that's like a, as much as you could quantify that, I think you could probably make a strong argument for that about Santa Barbara County. And it's one of the most critical times in this wine region's existence, you know? Um, there's just, you know, we have pioneers now that are, that are established that are starting to get older and move on themselves. And so what's gonna happen next? And, and we were able to capture those people, you know, still kind of at their apex. Um, there were tragedies involved. There were, you know, business failures. Uh, and so, you know, we, we have all that in there. So I think, it, you know, we were able to do it, but, the, but certainly it was um, for me too, I'm, you know, I liked, I'm a journalist, so I work at a newspaper, so I can write a new story all the time. So it's hard <laughs> to kind of set it in stone in a book, um, but, but really kind of coming to grips with the fact that it was a snapshot was really helpful. Um, to move to move forward and 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 adjust when needed, um. right? And I think um, 
and then the, the from the imagery thing, I was about to, to 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 kind of hand the same question over to you, Macduff, and and I I would imagine that it's a little bit different in that, you know, the images are the images. I mean, you know, it's the landscape is the landscape, kind of, or am I wrong as far as changing over time? Um, well, yeah, there's in the Richard San, Sanford um, introduction, there's a picture of the Santa Rita Hills with a vineyard and it's in, uh, it's a tumnal. That vineyard isn't there. It got ripped out, you know, like a week after I shot that picture. <laughs> so that's just, you, you, you think it's- Curse of McDuff. <laughs> <laughs> You think in geological time, and you're talking about millions of years, but in in vineyards, um, there's another example, the, the Pence, um, they pulled out uh, the opening shot of the Pence chapter. You have all these vineyards in front, well, they pulled that out. Um, you can't go back. Um, it, so things were changing. I mean, people yeah, are planning. They're they're uh, they're constantly there's some disease, so something might get pulled out because of that, or they decide that they don't want one varietal; they want another varietal. So either they are are pulling it out, or they're bringing in um, in the. Things were changing all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, interesting. So, so even so, even that is fluid. And 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 Matt, you touched on something just now in, in your last response, as far as this interesting point now, where you know the the true pioneers who started everything, essentially post prohibition, of course, um, um, are are still predominantly still in the game and active and going after it. And some are kind of at that point where they're looking to move on, you know, to, because it's been a 50 year pull <laughs> of doing something or, um, how do you, how do you see both of you? Because you, you've been here for so long and you're, you're so, you know, you went so deep with everybody um, so recently, like, you know, comprehensively around, you know, across the board. What, what do you see for Santa Barbara County in the next 10, 20 years? Any kind of, just in general, I mean, I think the COVID aside, which is obviously a troubling situation that, is, that has put a lot of things to the forefront of every industry, right? Um, the wine industry at large is in a really weird place right now. Um, awesome. It's gone through periods of, um, you know, bigger companies buying smaller companies. I, I, there's just so many wineries out there right now, not just in Santa Barbara County. Santa Barbara County has a seemingly kind of like a manageable number. Um, but if you look at the Central Coast or California or even the country, like there's just so much competition out there right now. Um, so much competition for attention, for sales, for everything that there's going to be some sort of shakedown, <laughs> I think, in the, in the years to come. And in the past, there, there seemed to be kind of more uh, clear paths to um, exiting, right? So you could you could sell to a bigger company and, and that's that happens. I mean, Greg, you were able to, to, to sell a lot of your shares to, to Jackson family, um, but it's not happening that much anymore because I think these bigger companies are also like, wait a minute, let's, let's slow our roll a little bit, you know? And so you look at um, people here, I mean, you look at like a Jim Clendem and Aubin Clamat, I mean, his kids are showing some interest. So there might be kind of a move there. That's what you would like to see. That's what you see happen in Europe. That's why there's a, a strong tradition there. But a lot of kids who watch their parents grow up in the wine business are like, I don't want anything to do with that. You, you work all the time. Um, and so what are the exits for some of these, you know, really important brands if their kids aren't interested, if they don't have successors, like what is the succession, succession plan? Um, and I don't really know the answer to that. It's it's interesting to see as a journalist, but it's also like as a as a friend and colleague of these people, it's also kind of like you're just kind of waiting to hear what happens the whole time, you know? Right. Um, so I don't know. It's it's interesting. I've actually thought about writing a just a book that would be about kind of the lions and winter of Central Coast wine, you know, and how their outcomes what they're planning, what they're not planning, how their outcomes have changed. Some people have gotten really kind of, you know, screwed out of their, um, I mean, Bob Lindquist from Coupe talks very openly about 
um, how he was kind of, ex, you know, cut out of this brand that he created and, and grew into a global force. Um, and so, you know, I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, as a journalist, it, it'll make for interesting writing and reading, but I'm also like kind of holding my breath a little bit too to see to see how it goes. And then you have, you have, uh, you know, competition to some extent from cannabis. You have competition from other regions that maybe do a better job of marketing themselves in, in the marketplace. Um, there's a lot going on right now. And, and we make, like I say, I openly say we make, you know, I think the best wine consistently uh, out of anywhere in California, but that doesn't matter really all the time. The great quality doesn't necessarily mean you win. There's a lot more. It's, there's a lot more to, to play when it comes to the game of, wine competition and um and we get into a little bit of that in the book but it's really kind of more we captured it at this nice time so we're, now we'll see we'll look back in 10 years and go like how did all these people turn it's getting, out it's getting hot in here ketman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm gonna go put my tea down and take a shot of whiskey and <laughs> yeah <laughs> make the tanks a little colder how about um and and for you mcduff like what what do you see it's kind of a, a different type of question but not really. I mean, you're, you know, you're, how do you see the, the area in the next couple, like in the next generation? I, I, I don't know. I mean, one of the things that I think uh, one of the qualities of Santa Barbara County that is so charming is so many of these wineries are family owned. They're, they're not corporate. Um, and as Matt says, how long will that continue or will Santa Barbara County be able to continue that um, this tradition. Um, I think six uh, Santa Barbara County has a difficult time selling itself because someone says, "Well, you know, obviously we're going to promote Pinot Noir from Santa Rita Hills," and then somebody in Ballard Canyon says, "What do you mean? You know, it should be Syrah," and somebody in Happy Canyon says, "What do you mean? It should be Cabernet." Um, and to an extent, that's, I think, been very helpful to Santa Barbara keeping this low profile and having, there's, Santa Barbara County is a charming place and I hope it retains that. I, I hope in 10 or 20 years that that hasn't changed, that we don't have these sort of McMansion wineries and, and tasting rooms that uh, it's, the tasting rooms, for example, in, in Santa Barbara County, they just feel like you can walk in and they're familial, they're, um, they're approachable, and you don't feel like you need a Jaguar to drive up the driveway, um, you know, or you have to show your gold American Express card or something in order to gain entry. Um, and almost everybody that I've met, they're just really friendly. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things about this book, one of the chapters in it is a year in the life of a vineyard. And several people said, God, this answers all the questions that people, you know, it's like, go ahead and do your tasting, but read this chapter. <laughs> yeah, I, no, for sure. And I think, I think, you know, as we're kind of nearing the end and I want to, you know, see if there's any other kind of questions or anything else you want to add to kind of like put a bow on this. Um, but you touched on something, Macduff, which is interesting, and it, it, you touched on it earlier tonight and then just now, and it's something I've always seen as kind of a, I don't say blessing and a curse is a little too extreme, but that, you know, the diversity in the area sometimes can pose some challenges on, especially, you know, kind of far away marketing, right, when someone asks, like, what's Santa Barbara all about? And it's like, well, you know, it, it's sometimes hard to really just drill down and give them, like, a good, solid, succinct Do you answer. have 10 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> and so, um, and with that said, so while that can be something of a, you know, something of an impediment, um, if you will, from that marketing kind of, you know, mono, tight little message, um, it does make, as you said, for a very diverse kind of county, um, and, you know, I, I, can't, I can't stress it enough for everyone who's watching <laughs> is, um, is uh, this too. I mean, it's, it's so cool because the county is so diverse. And I think, you know, again, if, if we only had a bridal or two, which would be awesome in a lot of ways, um, it would, it, this book would not be as rich and diverse as it ultimately is. 
And so the fact that, you know, you've captured all of that in this is, is really beautiful. It's such a gift to all of us, um, as is your time tonight. So thank you both for being so kind of candid and honest and it was fun. Um, and, and again, to Chaucer's, there's a question about like, you know, where to find the book. Of course, Chaucer's in Santa Barbara um, is a wonderful spot. A lot of tasting rooms locally are selling the book. Um, and so that's another great way, you know, you can, when you're out tasting um, right now, obviously, you know, we all know it's, it's, you know, a little dodgy, but, you know, in the weeks to come, things will, you know, you know, in the weeks and months to come, um, that will be easier again. Please come back and visit. Um, we'd all love to host you. And, and most of us do have the book as well. So you can go wine tasting and pick up a copy um, along the way. And of course, Chaucer's is a, an amazing venue um, as always for this book and many others. Um, and that's it, anything yeah, you want to add or? Well, if you go to, we, I put a list of the, of Chaucer's is on it, some other retailers and wineries uh, where you can find the book too um, on our website, which is vinesandvisionsb.com. Uh, we were selling directly there. We still are, but we're frankly almost out of copies on our end. So we're probably gonna have to stop selling there. And got a few more here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play uh, the secondary market. <laughs> Two hundred bucks each. <laughs> um, so anyway, so so thank you, Mike. Thanks for allowing me the the privilege of of hosting this. It was really, really, really special. Matt, thanks for the um. Shout out to mom. I think mom's watching tonight. So the fact you, you referenced her, <laughs> huge, huge brownie points for me. So yeah, I got your back on that. That was really sweet. Thanks for it. And Mike, back to you. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Please again at joshersbooks.com. But Matt Ketman, McDuff Everton, Greg Brewer, this is probably the most magical night of, out of all the virtual events we did, you guys were excellent. So I thank the three of you and I wish you all the best of success. Matt, I'm sorry I miss this book. Your magazine is <laughs> wine enthusiast. <laughs> but I wrote, anyway, I'll take whatever I can I get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wrote for Wine Spectator for you know, nine years too. So it's okay. I, I blame Greg Brewer on that because of his. You know, it's so wonderful. So <laughs> thank you, everyone, and have a nice evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Greg.